Welcome back to Exceptional Talk with Dr. Clark. Today, I have two beautiful young ladies that I want you guys to meet. Our topic for today will be paraprofessionals are teachers too. So thank you for joining me, Ms. Roland and Ms. Drumright. So uh, we're going to start with Ms. Roland. You tell me a little bit about yourself and then we'll move on to Ms. Drumright. Hello, hello, and thank you so much for inviting me, Dr. Clark. This is an honor. I am a, um, I do have a bachelor's degree in computer information systems. Um, however, I discovered that I wanted to, uh, wanted to um, engage into education. And so I am currently working on uh, my certification to become a, a certified teacher. Um, awesome. Yes. All right. And I do love working with children too. I have three kids of my own. Um, so yes, I do love to work with kids. Great. All right, Ms. John Wright, share a little bit about you. Hello, everyone. My name is Kiwana Drumwright, um, but my students know me as Coach Key or Coach Drumwright or Miss Drumwright. They call me, you know, everything. Um, I am a DES paraprofessional at Monday's Mill High School. Um, I'm also um, going into my third year of coaching the auxiliary dance squad with the band. Um, I'm also the event coordinator of our PBIS um, group at our school as well. So very busy around the school. Um, uh, don't have any kids of my own yet, but I do love kids. I've been teaching and bossing kids around since I was a kid <laughs> and making sure they're doing the right thing since I was a kid. So it's just kind of natural to, um, you know, um, kind of be like a big sister to them. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to, um, make this very brief with the sake of your time, but again, I, I really appreciate it. I'm gonna just start and ask a question of, for both of you. Uh, again, we'll stop Ms. Rowland. You can answer the question first, and then of course, Ms. Drumwright, you just chime on in after her. Um, I understand that you are seeking certification to become a teacher, uh, but in the midst of that, you have been working for years as a paraprofessional and currently working as a paraprofessional and which, I want people to understand that paraprofessionals are teachers too. Um, so can you just give us an example or, you know, a little scenario, maybe one of the greatest experiences that you've had working with students or even with some of the teachers, um, just one of your greatest experience that you've had working as a paraprofessional, and then you can come back. Well, of course, we're going to always start with positivity. And then just kind of tell me something that was a little more challenging for you that, um, you know, that you kind of wish that maybe something could have been done differently or just an experience that wasn't as pleasant. Um, so please. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, while working at uh, Money's Mills High School, I worked um, with uh within Money's Mill High School for two and a half years. And I worked closely with Dr. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> Had a great experience working with you in your classroom okay. um, as an English teacher. Ed, teacher. And um, the great experience that I had is when you were away and um, you had to have me um, engage the students with uh, a curriculum. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't pinpoint exactly what the name of the curriculum was. Um, but it was an awesome experience um, just to uh, work closely with them, um, engage them with um, the type, the subject that it was. it was. It was English. I think it had to deal with writing. Just working closely with them and whatever they had issues with, uh, I was able to um, uh, just help them you know, to enhance their skill in writing, uh, uh, doing a lot of research, you know, with them, um, just, you know, pretty much just assisting them with anything that they had that, you know, that was, um, 
that they needed, you know, help with. <laughs> I, and I must um, say that you did an awesome job. The kids were very excited when I returned. As a matter of fact, they was talking about, oh, are you still going to help us with this and that? Uh, so yes, you did an awesome job. So before you get to your negative part, I won't say negative part, let's say the most challenging part. I want to hear Ms. Drum rights. Uh, okay hers as well and then we'll let you both share those challenges but we'll start with hers with the positivity uh, okay as well oh uh, whoo it's a lot of positive <laughs> moments um, and it doesn't just have to be at monday's meal um i usually don't really say the schools but that's fine you know uh hey it is what it is we you know we all want to you know people to know that we do what we do <laughs> and that's just it. So um, yes, it doesn't have to be that school. It could be anywhere that you, you know, had a great experience, you know. Um, well, a great like um, full circle experience that I have is um, one of my dance babies. Um, so I started um, when I went to college, I went to Albany State and I came home like second semester of um, my freshman year because I took sick. I had ulcerative colitis like Crohn's disease. And a couple months on upon me returning home to deal with my health, um, I was given a opportunity to be the dance coach at a middle school. And I was, you know, 18, 19 at the time. So that was very like exciting. Like, oh my God. Sure. Yes. <laughs> so, I, so I went for it. And um one of my babies, um, she started with me her seventh grade year, and her attitude was awful at first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, just being um, transparent about what you really deal with there. And by the time our interaction took place up until the end of that season, she became the co-captain during her eighth grade year. And um, today, full circle moment, she attends Albany State University where oh, I was. Wow. Oh, oh that's, now, like, that's a great story. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like, wow, you're grown with me. Like, <laughs> So, uh, and of course, my other babies, I keep in touch with a lot of my other students from um, that class and, um, you know, throughout the year. So just seeing, knowing that I at least I know I made some type of impact there in her life and she's doing good. And a lot of my mm -hmm. other babies are doing good is the highlight and what keeps propelling me to continue forward. Awesome. And that's one of the highlights of being a teacher is that mm -hmm. you are impacting all of these students some of them come back some of them don't but it, it doesn't matter because you know that you have sown seeds into their lives so right. that is right. awesome all right so now let's kind of switch the roles a little bit and kind of <laughs> talk about those challenges because one thing about it even as a teacher you know i have encountered so many challenges but i have thank God, have the, had the ability to overcome those. And even in a, as a para, which I've also worked as a paraprofessional before during the time that I was seeking my uh, master's degree. And it's, it was kind of different for me because I came from being a director at a nonprofit to being a para in a service position. So, you know, I had to kind of humble myself, you know, I had to put on that, that, that ability to, to, you know, work with others and not be that, that management or that leadership, but to be a follower. And it was kind of challenging for me to be a follower because I, I am a leader just by nature. I don't, you know, as a little girl, <laughs> my dad said, stop bossing everybody around, you know, so it just has been there for all, uh, so tell me, you know, what are some of the challenges that you have uh, experienced as a pair? Okay, so my challenge was when I was in the room by myself uh, at one point where I had to um, lead the whole class, entire classroom, um, it went off, it was fine at first, um, engaging all the students. But once I had to, um, I had to actually uh, 
multitask with getting, uh, making sure that uh, I, I had to work like uh, really closely with uh, a, like a pair of students who were having problems with uh, having an issue with the assignment and also trying to keep the entire classroom um, as a whole um, engaged at the same time, if that, that makes challenging. sense. Mm -hmm. that, is, that is very challenging. And you can you imagine having to try to do that virtually? You know, uh, that is really, I, can, ooh, I couldn't even imagine. You, it, it was a struggle, <laughs> but I, I was able to be introduced to a software, an app called Pear Deck. And when I tell you Pear Deck was one of those apps that allowed the students to interact throughout the whole entire presentation and throughout my whole deliverance of instructions, I was able to check for understanding. I was able to see if they were actually, you know, grasping, you know, what I was actually teaching. And I can imagine a teacher and a person that doesn't even, you know, teach put in a position like that. But I can tell you, I, I, and I remember telling you this, she didn't know I was there. I was outside of the door one day when I asked her to go ahead and get started. And she was actually teaching. She was, she was really in her mode. And I said to you, I said, <laughs> listen, and, I, and it is amazing because I've had to say these things to both of you. I said to her, I said, when you get in front of this class, this is where you're supposed to be. She said, I right. never really wanted to be a teacher. I said, Ms. Rowe, <laughs> you are a teacher. Because I could see her transform as she got up to do the, and she was doing the warm up. And she, she was just doing it. Yeah. I, so what I'm saying is a lot of times we really don't know what direction we're supposed to go. Uh, because we ha all have a, a destiny. We all have a path, you know, and mm -hmm. I remember when I was trying to do finances, I was working for um, all these different collection company, I, you know, and I, I had got all the way up to the locations uh, manager. And my dad said to me, he was like, babe, you are not where you're supposed to be because I, the, mm -hmm. the companies kept going out of business. They kept changing. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go back to education. So I went back to education and I've been here ever since. So mm -hmm. a lot of times there has to be things to take place to make us understand where we're supposed to go. Right. And so she did an awesome job. Now, Ms. John Wright, let me hear <laughs> yours. Um, hmm. As a parent, uh, it's been a couple things, um, but more so when you just have that one student that does not want to conform for anything. <laughs> it's like <laughs> absolutely. Oh <laughs> my goodness! Is I don't feel like we ask for much. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a situation where I was in the class um, by myself, but not by myself because the teachers were close by. Um, but, you know, I was pretty much in the same position as you, um, Ms. Roland, and just kind of making sure everything was sustained and taken care right. of. And this student, I mean, we literally every day have to tell the same student, take your hood off, put your phone up. Right. It's your senior year, you want to pass, right? And it's just like the more, it didn't matter how you said it, nicely, loudly, softly, on a sheet of paper, this student just loved being defiant. And it's disheartening because something as simple as pay attention so you can be more educated. Pay attention so you can be a bit better individual. That that makes some students mad. And um, um, I took his phone. I took his phone and he blew a complete gasket. I'm talking about tables flew. Um, 
you know, people were pushed out the way just, you know, just to get back to something um, that is supposed to be an enhancement or an addition to your life and not your whole life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, aside from the fact that, you know, he was belligerent, it's just what he was being belligerent about. And that the disheartening part is the worst experience for me, because it's like, even though he expressed that loudly and um, flamboyantly in that nature, um, you have students that have silent protests too, that just refuse to be a greater version of themselves. And that's the part that's like, okay, I've said everything I could. And just the reality that you're not going to save everyone, um, you know, is heavy. It is. It is. It, it, it's relieving though in the same breath because it's like okay I don't have to save the whole world it's eight billion people oh my goodness I don't have to do it all by myself but when you encounter people and you see things from the outside looking in that could use little tweaking and readjustment for them to be great you want that from them especially as the teacher and um you know as a pair with with that you know being the addition in the classroom i give that additional like cheerleader support like you you and got it, so. yes yeah that is disheartening when they don't get it maybe one day <laughs> yeah well you know that that is something unfortunately when you're dealing with students with special needs that you're going to encounter and not and actually to be honest it's not just students with special needs it's not it, it, you know you have it's you have not. students in your general ed setting you know that just truly are going to be defiant regardless yeah. to how well you teach how what, what uh, you know you can be a good person you can be good to you all of those things mm -hmm. and there will continue to be defiant and that is when you have to put on that 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 nurturer, you know, right. role. You know where a lot of times some of these students may not get at home that love, that attention. Some of it is just pure wanting your attention, or right. just wanting attention from anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, this it's bigger than just them being defiant. A lot of times we have to dig a little deeper. To right. see to the core of why is this student being defiant? What is right. going on? You know, uh, what 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 triggers? You know, is it just the phone? Like you said, it is so much bigger right. than a cell phone. Mm -hmm. You know, that's correct. So those Definitely. are the things that, as a as a teacher, I would really want them to understand that it's all it's not all academic. Mm -hmm. You want to be teaching the whole child you know yes. uh, when they come to us in the morning we have <laughs> no idea what they've dealt with over the night or, or even that morning I have had students that have encountered situations right before they got to school and mm. here I am dealing with something and I'm I have no clue and like you said you just Absolutely. say a couple of words and they just blow a gasket <laughs> like right. like Oh my God, I'm just trying to talk to you, you know? So mm -hmm. those experiences, unfortunately, as teachers, we will in encounter, you know? Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you you took it well and, and oh, yeah. actually, you know, handling it to a point where you know now as you go forward that regardless to who you are, you're not going to be able to, like you say, save everybody. You know, it's right. just like a ship that's about to sink. We can't put everybody in the ship, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, you're not gonna yeah. be able to get them all out. You're gonna try, you know. But our, our thing is we try hard. That's that passion that mm -hmm. teachers have. And when you see that our parents, and that's what I want people to understand, that why I say parents are teachers too, because you guys a lot of times are really in the trenches right there working with them while we are do delivering instructions and while we're doing other things, you know, you're having sometimes to get some of the backlash, you know, 
well, well, you, who are you? You're, you're not a teacher. You know, you can't tell me not, what to do. You know, so right. I, I, I'll oh, get that line. Yes. I'll that get line. That yes. You gotta respect my credentials, child. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm here for you. Don't don't bring my title into this conversation. Absolutely. How about that? Exactly. You know, and even some of the teachers as co-teachers, you know, they get it too. Oh, you're not a real teacher. So, oh, wow. and, you know, so yeah, so it's unfortunate that it has to be that way. And we want to change that mindset. Uh, and it comes from the top as well. So those are things that as teachers that we have had to endure, but we know that a change needs to come. Mm -hmm. And we know that a change will come when people realize again, that Paris our teachers too. So with that being said, again, I, I, I love this conversation. I love the fact that you guys have shared your experiences. Thank you so much. Is there anything for the good of all that you would just kind of like to say? You know, I always kind of leave, leave our audience thinking, you know, is it something that you can say that can leave somebody that is out there now that is wanting and trying to become a teacher, you know? Um, and to just let them know that you just have to keep going. You, you know, you don't give up. So, Absolutely. all right. And uh, either one of you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I usually, I, I've been kind of doing it like Ms. Rowland and Ms. Drum, right? You know, they say yeah. first come, first serve, however. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, well, I, you know, right at this particular time, it really doesn't matter. I just chime in and just kind of okay. tell the audience, you know, something that you would like to leave them thinking about. I, I would say that if it is a passion of yours, it has to be a passion. Um, you can't just come into this field thinking that, oh, I'm just going to get in here and just, you know, it, it has to be a passion of yours. Um, Absolutely. And you want to strive and give your all because it is rewarding. It's, it's very rewarding. Um, it's, it's a very rewarding career. I, I love it. All right. Thank you. All right. Ms. Drum Wright. Nice, definitely. Um, a quote that I live by is, it takes a village to raise a child. Um, I say that at the high school, I say that in the classroom with my dance team, with my mentorship program, Essence of Beauty Mentorship. All right, there um, you go. Yes, we, we Go ahead it. and uh, put that plug <laughs> on in there. And then when you finish, tell us a little bit about Essence of Beauty, but go ahead with that. Sure, oh, thank you. I sure <laughs> will. Um, but it takes a village to raise a child. You, you know, in theory, it sounds good to be all independent. And, oh, I did this on my own. I rendered this child to the best of my ability. Um, but when you have a support system around you that's equally yoked, no yes, matter how big absolutely. or small, yes. Yes. it makes more productive people, citizens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, these people, as teachers, we are with them half and half they're with us eight plus hours a day and then they go home so we have a big role in being a part of that village and raising our children to the best of our ability so if teachers paraprofessionals if you want to get into this field uh like miss Rowland said you have to love it you have to want you have to love the children <laughs> you have to <laughs> love yes all the parts the good yes. and the and yes. actually yes. find solutions and not just judge them because we all been in high school exactly we all been in middle school elementary school you know we grew up we were kids before too so if you're going to be there either empathize and help them or find another career path absolutely, absolutely. very well said absolutely yes yes all right so go ahead and tell us a little bit about essence of beauty uh, I love when there are organizations that are really working with, with children. Um, myself, I had considered, I'm like, okay, but y'all know that Dr. Clark has her hand in five or six different things. <laughs> and I, I'm like, I can't put one more thing on my plate. But if there was one 
thing that I would actually do, it would be another all girls. I mean, just an organization building women to become ladies. You know, I, I see so many girls have just lost all their respect, all their self-respect. Mm -hmm. You know, if there were anything that I had time to do and when I retire, that might be one of the things that I might just do is have an organization with girls, teaching them how to be ladies because they're forgotten. They have totally forgotten. And guys just don't respect them anymore because of the fact that they don't respect themselves. So when you talk about working with girls, I know you have your hands full, Mr. I'm right. <laughs> yes, and um, <laughs> we've also in the last couple of years of the program expanded to working with young men as well. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah. They need help too. Yes, oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And it kind of goes back to that text a village thing because um we well, I'm first of all, Essence of Beauty Mentorship 501c3 is um going on four years old. It's an organization to help um our underserved community and um children who need assistance and that holistic mindset in their community where they can get resources, um, whether we can supply it or um, you know, partnering with other people to supply it. And and we also do workshops and pop-up workshops where they're learning through different arts. So we've had fitness classes, drama class, dance class, fashion, acting, um, the list goes on. And, um, you know, we've done it virtually over the pandemic and we do it in person as well. Um, very fun running the organization. Um, the founder of the, of the organization name is Ebony Hamden. Um, and she was inspired by this from her own upbringing, which is something that I can relate to as well. Um, you know, just growing up in a title, title one school and, you know, understanding, um, kind of what that role means and where we're underserved in our community. Mm -hmm. So um, the most recent thing that we're working on is coming July 10th, we'll be having a graduation bash for our kids um, that just graduated from high school. It's an open event to the public, um, gradu graduates from high school and children 18 or younger get in free and it's $10 for adults. So you can find us on Eventbrite. You okay. can find us on Instagram at Essence of Beauty Mentorship. I um, mean, we have different divisions as well. So we do things specifically with the junior young ladies and young um, men. And then we do things um, specifically with our teenagers too, like Teen Talk Wednesday, where they get together and have different discussions of their own. And it's just great and refreshing that even with all the chaos in the world, there's still a demographic of our children who want to know more and are not just jaded by... Um, popularity and you know jaded by frivolous topics and you know there's nothing wrong with being social and talking about frivolous things but they explore beyond that or find depth in you know those more mainstream topics so I love it um you all come out <laughs> it's a, it, so, it sounds like it is it is a great organization and yes. um and and believe it or not I have exceptional um services and resources which will be a 5013C that will also be providing services. Yes, ma'am. Thank you uh, <laughs> for young people in the arena of careers. And so with that being said, I, I would definitely want to see us partner um, at a later date in time once everything get up and, and running. You know, I'm always looking <laughs> for support. <laughs> uh, but Ms. Uh, Roland. Yes, ma'am. All right. I want you to go ahead and tell us a little bit about, see, the people don't know, this lady here seems like an angel. Now, what I want to do is we have gone a little longer than I normally do. My, my videos usually be less than 10 minutes, but this information was so good. So what we're going to do is I am going to end part one and we're going to come <laughs> back together for part two. And we're okay. going to talk a little bit more, but then this time we're going to get a little more into what you all are about, about you as your artistry and about you as your business. All right. So all right. Awesome. I want to say, guys, welcome to Exceptional Talk with Dr. Clark. This has been part one for para, uh, paraprofessionals, <laughs> RT2.
<laughs> you know, talk about that preparing, you know, those, you know, so guys, I want you to don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. All right. So again, welcome to Exceptional Talk with Dr. Clark, part one.